I said, praise the Lord. Wonderful to be here again. And uh, we call the people, we praise the Lord and appreciate uh, the great uh, instruction of coming here as a kind of uh, child of Adam and Eve. And uh, when you finish, I pray that God will give us the chance to come and do an operation here. Proceed. I said crusade, and the Lord will make us grow in Jesus' name. Now I said that to start up Mushi and Oshodi. Mushi on the stage, you are hearing? Uh, please uh, look for a place and let's have something uh, big. Uh, you know, Mushi population is wonderful. I know Oshodi too. Oshodi, are you there? I can't hear you. Where are you? Okay, let, let's find a place in Oshodi too. And I pray that as uh, God is prospering the work in our hands, every group will grow. Every district will grow. And God will give us a real, real progress in Jesus' name. As we have heard about uh, the special day tomorrow after the service, we're all going out. I wish I could even come to your area so you will know that I am part of this thing. And so that we're all going out, it will be done in Jesus' name. And then you will soon have a kind of, uh, you know, Bagada special vest and special clothing that you are going to wear. I don't know why, what I, whether I should tell you everything, but all of Lagos, all our workers, all our members, will make uh, that t-shirt available. In fact, I'm ordering for my own, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. And then we put it on on the first Friday of next month, June. Somebody say June. On that first Friday, we'll wear it everywhere. Office, market, school, everywhere, we're wearing that thing on that uh, Friday, we're going to turn Lagos around. Yeah. You'll be part of it. Yeah. I can't hear you. I said you'll be part of it. Yeah. Now, don't mind my, you know, sometimes I need to make announcement myself. Is that all right? Now, I've been waiting for all of us at Bagada. Is uh, that this uh, Bagada? You, you, if you've not been there, I, I don't want you to raise up your hand, but this uh, coming June, when it comes to your turn, on Sunday, you will be there. Your converts will be there. We're going to rake every community and everywhere, and we're going to be there when it comes to our turn in Jesus' name. And then Thursday, you know, I was uh, waiting for... Uh, you were the people that came last Thursday, were you? Only Isolo, okay. Isolo and, you know, the other people, Agigi, Alima, Shua, and Ikeja. I was uh, waiting to see some faces. I didn't see some of your faces. I don't want to point at you now, but next month, when it comes to our turn, you know, it, it is Miracle Revival Service. Help me shout it. Miracle Revival Service. Help me say that again. And if you will, if we can join together, I'm telling you, blind eyes will be opened. The lame will rise up and walk. And the people who have been condemned in the hospital say that they are going to die. The spirit of resurrection and life has come. And you'll be there at Bagada. You know anybody that is sick, anybody that has any problem, be there. And God is going to do wonders in Jesus' name. You must give me a good amen before I start. Let's pray together, pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for all our people here, brothers, sisters, pastors, and women reps, and women leaders, and all workers, men and women, from the children workers to the youth workers, campus workers, and language church workers, and all of us together, adult and church workers. Lord, we pray that you are going to enrich our lives tonight in Jesus' name. Those who are weak, strengthen them. 
those who are kind of uh, stepping back or going back i pray you lift them up in jesus name Amen. let your power come into every life and we're praying lord for all our sunday services tomorrow that you will do wonders in every service in jesus name Amen. and for our support we could do and um, and the prayer and the badagri coming to Bagada for the first time. Lord, we pray you watch over them as they come in Jesus' name. And we're praying that the spirit of revival will catch up with everybody. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch everyone. As we're here tonight for our workers' training, Lord, I pray you'll do wonders in every life. Your people will never be the same again. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You are blessed already. Please, you can sit down. Tonight, we're coming to Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, you will see verse 10. It's talking about the new man. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, I'm reading. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him, that created him and tonight we're talking about the making of the new man in Christ the making of the new man in Christ this chapter this chapter 3 verses 1 to 25 is very important as it describes the new man in Christ let me tell you this if this chapter were missing in the New Testament God's revelation would not have been complete. So important. And if this chapter is missing in your life, you wouldn't have been ready and complete as a new man. And we want to get to the new heavens and the new earth. And to get to the new heavens and the new earth, this chapter is very important. It's indispensable in your life, in my life, in our lives together. Let's look at Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3, I'm reading from verses 13 and 14. Second Peter chapter 3, and we're reading from verses 13 and 14. It says in verse 13, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. If we're looking for the new heavens and we're looking for the new earth, then we must be new men and new women, new creatures in Christ. And this chapter tells us the making, the developing, the training, the transforming of the new man in Christ. Look at verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that she looked for such things, that is, you are looking for the new heavens and you're looking for the new earth, be diligent that ye may be found of fame in peace without spot and blameless. I pray the Lord will do it in our lives. The new man in this chapter, that he is in Colossians chapter 3, is the man who has repented. He has repented fully. He has repented truly. And he has received Christ's salvation with transformation. When we say the new man, a new man in Christ is a man who has repented. It's a woman who has repented and is a person who has received Jesus Christ as his personal savior and he has received the salvation of the Lord and transformation. Number one is a regenerated man. Regenerated man from the inside, from his spirit, his soul, his inner man is changed, is transformed. Is regenerated. Number two, he is recreated. There's a new creation. That's why it says, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. It's a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Number three, he resembles Christ. He resembles Christ. Christ lives on the inside of him. And now he carries Christ about because his life is reflecting who Christ is. He reflects Christ. Number four, he is reaping the harvest for Christ. He reaps the harvest for Christ. He hears about evangelism. Either we're doing it corporately, like we're doing it tomorrow in Lagos State, all over Lagos State, 
and we're going to touch lives in every community the youths are involved the children are involved our sisters our mothers are involved our brothers and our fathers in the lord we're all involved and we're reaching out the new creature in christ and the new man in christ is reaping harvest for christ and then is ready for christ's return you've heard about the rapture that the trumpet will sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive will be, will be caught together with them and she is getting ready for christ's return the new man will be rewarded that's you i say that's you you will be rewarded in jesus name and then we will all reign with christ when he comes to establish his kingdom you will reign with christ I said you were in with Christ. Now let us look at the chapter. Let's look at the chapter. As we look at this chapter 3, number 1, we see the conversion and the consecration of the new man. The conversion and the consecration of the new man. Look at it. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is seen with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory that man is converted the conversion and the consecration of the new man in the next section we're looking at the corruption and the condemnation of the old man the corruption and the condemnation of the old man. That's why it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. We, for which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them but now ye also put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth lie not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man old man old man with his deeds the corruption and the condemnation of the old man in the next section, number three, you'll find the compassion and the condescension of the new man. The compassion and the condescension of the new man. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, And put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bunch of free but christ is all and in all put on here is your compassion put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved by words of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against and even as christ forgive you so also do ye the compassion and the condescension of the new man. In the next section, number four, we have the calling and the commission of the new man. The calling and the commission of the new man. Look at verse 15. And let, uh, from verse 14, uh, it says, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the, let the peace of God dwell in your hearts. To the which ye are also called, that's your calling, ye are also called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, what do you do here? Tell me out aloud. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Number five, the companionship and the consolation in your new home. 
the companionship and the consolation in the new home wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is speech in the lord husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the lord fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged I pray that this newness will come in every family in Jesus' name. Number six, the competence and the commitment of the new man. We're looking at him now in his place of work. And we're looking at his competence. And we're looking at his commitment in his uh, place of work of this uh, new man. It tells us in verse 22, servants, so be in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men please us, but in singleness of mind, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men. Number seven, the compensation of the new man and the condemnation of the negligent man. The compensation of the new man, that reward is coming, and then the condemnation of the negligent man. Verse 24, the compensation, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Verse 25, the condemnation, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done, the wrong which he has done, and there is no respect of persons. So as you analyze the chapter, and you look at the whole chapter, you find number one, the conversion and the consecration of the new man. You find number two, the corruption and the condemnation of the old man. You find in number three, the compassion and the condescension of the new man. You find in number four, the calling and the commission of the new man. Number five, you find the companionship and the consolation in his new home, in her new home. And then the competence, number six, the competence and the commitment of the new man. Then number seven, the compensation of the new man and the condemnation of the negligent man. As we look at this chapter tonight, I told you the topic is the making of the new man in Christ. The making of the new man in Christ. The Lord will mold you. He will mend your life. He will recreate your life in Jesus' name. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the pursuit and the purging of the new man. Number one, the pursuit and the purging of the new man. Number two, the peacefulness and the purity of the renewed man. The peacefulness and the purity of the renewed man. Number three, the picture and the pattern for reproductive mastery. A person who masters his calling, he masters his commission, he masters the duty, the responsibility God has given him, and is reproductive, reproductive. The picture and the pattern for reproductive mastery. Number one, tell me number one. The pursuit and the purging of the new man. Can we say that together? I understand you don't have microphone, so your voice looks dull. Can we say that? The pursuit and the purging of the new man. That's great. We're looking at verses 1 to 9. And in this, verses 1 to 9, you'll see it neatly divides into three parts. Number one, the pursuit of the risen man. The pursuit of the risen man. Number two, the purging of the righteous man. The purging of the righteous man. Number three, the punishment of the reprobate man. The punishment of the reprobate man. Look at Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 4. 
the pursuit of the risen man. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. He's talking about a person who is fully identified with Christ. He died with Christ. He was buried with Christ. He is risen with Christ. And is going to one of these days, is going to come with Christ. It says, if you are risen with Christ, if your life, the old life has been buried, and there is a spiritual resurrection, it says, there's something you will pursue. You will seek the things which are above, not the things which are on earth. You will set your affection. You will set your love, you will set your desire on things above and not on things on the earth. Then you remind us in verse 3, for ye are dead, and your life is seed with Christ in God. And then he says, if we keep on living that renewed life, that righteous life, that transformed life, if we keep on living as that new creature in Christ, look at what it says in verse 4, when Christ shall appear, Christ is coming again. Because he promised, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming again. And the Lord, by the Spirit, is assuring us that when Christ shall come again, when he shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him, for we shall also appear with him in glory. I pray you'll be there in Jesus' name. It talks about the life of this a new creature. And the life of this new man in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 18. It tells us in verse, in verse 18, it says, Why we look not at the things which are seen. It's saying that our attention is on things above. Our heart is on things above. Our dedication is for things above. Our ambition is for things above. When we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Look at Psalm 73. In Psalm 73, I'm reading from verse 25. The life of the new man, the passion of the new man, the pursuit of the new man, the ambition of the new man, the affection of the new man. Where you center your affection, where you focus your ambition, things above, things spiritual, things eternal. It tells us in Psalm 73 verse 25, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. You see that? That's the life of the believer. It's not a buried in sand and cement. It's not buried in the farm and on the field. It's not buried in the market making money. It's heart. It's passion. It's desire. It's aspiration. It's ambition. It's on things above. I pray the Lord will do it in every one of us. Good amen. Good amen. The Lord will so center our affection, ambition on things above in Jesus' name. Look at verse 26. My flesh and my heart, my flesh and my heart fail it. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My portion forever. My portion forever. My portion forever. Say it for yourself. My portion forever. He'll be your portion. He'll be your desire. He'll be your ambition. You will seek things above and not things on the earth. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews 11 verse 14. It says, uh, for they that say such things desire, they declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now, but now, but now, they desire a better country. That is seven. I am going there. I said that is seven. I am going there. 
And that means you must set your affection there. You must not let a day pass without thinking about heaven, without praying about heaven, without desiring to get to heaven. Everything you do, you will say, Christ is coming. He may meet me today. What's he going to meet in my hand? I don't want to be left in this world when Christ will come. I want to be there when Christ will come. And because of that, your heart, your passion, your desire, your ambition, your affection is set on things on earth. Look at verse 16. But now the desire a better country that is and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. He has prepared for me a city. He has prepared for you a city. Will be there in Jesus' name. Come back to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. The purging of the righteous man. The purging of the righteous man. It tells us in Colossians chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 5. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 5. It says, uh, mortify. That word modify. Mortify means put it to death, kill it, destroy it, get rid of it, get it out of your, out of your life, mortify therefore, destroy therefore, put off therefore, cleanse off that for, separate from this therefore, your members which are upon the earth, kill fornication, destroy uncleanness, and then it goes on to say, in that same verse 5, an evil concupiscence. You will not think evil. You will not plan evil. You will not perform evil. You will not do evil. And then it says, in order or uncleanness, kill it all. Get it all. Get rid of that. Purge it out. And then, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. Look at verse 7. In the which also ye walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now, but now, new creature, but now, new man, but now, born again child of God, but now, Christian worker, but now, Christian leader, ye put off all these. None of these things will remain. No tamai to remain in your life. No destructive element to remain in your life. Anger, put it off. Wrath, put it off. Malice, put it off. Blasphemy, never. I said blasphemy, never. Feel the communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Seen, ye are put off. The old man with his deeds. Old man is dead. Old lifestyle is dead. We bury them. We get rid of them. We destroy them. The purging of the righteous man. In First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 6. In First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore purge it out. Get rid of it. It will not remain in your life. I said this will not remain in your life. You see, if we're new creatures, and if we're new men and new women in Christ, if our heart has been made anew, if our spirit has been made new, if our soul has been made new, all these things will not be there anymore. And if Christ were to come and live in your house and go around with you and go to the market with you and go to the office with you, he will not find any of these things in your life. If I were to come, if it were possible for me to come and visit you, and that whole day I'm spending with you from morning till evening, the way you relate with people around you, and the way you talk, and the way you act, and the way you sell, and the way you buy, I will see all these things, all things, they are not in your life anymore. I'll be able to testify concerning your life that you're a new man. I'll be able to testify you're a new woman. Is she there? Is she there? 
I pray that this new life will be manifest in every life in Jesus' name. Look at this, verse 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new love, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I pray that this new life, everybody around you will see it. It will shine forth. It will spill over. And people will see that truly you are born again. Truly you are a child of God. Not just a child of God. A Christian worker for that matter. We are coming to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And I am reading from verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 22. That she put off concerning the former conversation. The old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that and that she put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness verse 25 wherefore putting away tell me no lying again i said no lying again small lie big lie everything is gone wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for ye are members one of another verse 28 let him that stole do what steal no more but rather let him labor walking with his hands the things which is with the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, you will edify those who are around you. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 31. Let all bitterness. How many kinds of bitterness? And all wrath, and all anger, and all clamor, and all evil speaking be put away from you with, tell me, all malice, and be kind one to another, on the tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. How has Christ forgiven you? Completely or partially. I said, How has God forgiven you? Totally or in a little way. Look at that verse 32. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. How do we forgive? I said, How do you forgive? Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. That will be your life. I said that will be our life. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. You'll be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace for them that call on the name of the Lord out of out of a pure heart. We're coming back to Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three. We're looking at this verse six now. The punishment. Of reprobate of a reprobate man, the punishment of a reprobate man in Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. For we think sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. I want you to underline those three words 
Ross of God. Ross of God. It says the wrath of God comes upon some people, children of disobedience. Look at chapter 5 of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you. Amen. As becometh saints. We are now saints. We are no more sinners. I am no more a sinner. You can't say that. You are a servant of God. You are a saint of God. You are steward of the mysteries of the kingdom. And as it becometh saints, let not uncleanness, fornication, covetousness, evil be named among you. Look at verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no monger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you. Let no false prophet deceive you. Let not anyone misinterpreting the Bible and misinterpreting grace. Let no one deceive you. And let no backslider deceive you. Let no theologian deceive you. They say they've gone to seminary. And what they learned in seminary is to corrupt the word of God. It's to contradict the word of God. And it is to encourage people to keep on living in sin. And they say there's no problem. There's a great problem. An eternal problem. For six. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes watch the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. There's punishment at the end of a sinful life, at the end of a corrupt life. In Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. Romans. Chapter 1, we're reading from verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's some people, they know the truth, they hold the truth, they preach the truth, but their lives are righteous. And they hold the truth, they defend the truth, they preach good doctrine, but their lives are corrupt. And it says, look at that verse 18 again, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That will not be your life. I said that will not be your life. You hold the truth and you'll be righteous in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14 verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. You see that? Children of disobedience. Those who claim they are going to judge are coming to judge and they still live in unrighteousness. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of, the, of his indignation. And it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone because of the wrath of God, because they die as sinners. And it says in the presence of his holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up. How long? Forever and ever. Forever and ever. And they have no rest. Day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I pray that will not be your Lord. 
We're coming to point number two now. Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three. The peacefulness and the purity of renewed men. Those who are renewed. Those who are regenerated. And those who have been transformed by the power, the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians from chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. This section will be divided into three. Also, the pleasantness of a renewed man. A renewed man is pleasant. You can live with him. You can walk with him. You can siege by him. You can discuss with him. You can marry him. And you can live with him. Because he's a renewed man. A renewed woman. The pleasantness of a renewed man. Number two. The peaceableness. Is peaceable is peaceful. The peaceableness of a recreated member. Is a member of the church of the firstborn. Of the church of Christ. And because of this, his life has been recreated. I will make you fishers of men. The Lord has transformed his life. Number three, the preparedness of rewardable ministers. The preparedness of rewardable ministers. Let's look at uh, the first section here. The pleasantness of a renewed man. We're looking at um, Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. See how pleasant the new man is. And I put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. He is not tribalistic. He is not nationalistic. He sees everyone who is a child of God having equal opportunity, equal inheritance in the Lord. Circumcision, non-circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free. He is not saying this one is illiterate, this one is not educated, this one is not in our camp, this one is not in our section. He loves everyone. He's a pleasant man. He's a pleasant woman. And look at this, but Christ is all and in all. Look at verse 12. His pleasantness put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved when you interact with him when you live with him it will not draw you to sin it will not by appearance it will not by encouragement it will not by counseling it will not by his example leading to sin he is holy and interaction with him makes you holy look at verse 12 by wells of mercies is merciful you have a need he has uh, what you need he'll give it to you freely he is generous he is merciful and then he says kind kind words kind look kind interaction kindness comes out of his life naturally as water is flowing through the pipe and getting to your home humbleness of mind if he has something you don't have he'll not be proud he'll not look down on you he'll not be seen know your place and i know my place i'm not your equal you're not my equal there's no pride in him is he has humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering if you mistakenly do something that you know he feels this is not right it's not going to revenge if he wants to talk to you about it, he will talk to you about it in a pleasant way. I pray my life will be pleasant. I pray your life will be pleasant. And the people who see you, the people who interact with you, they'll see that pleasantness of the renewed man, the renewed woman, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13, for bearing one another. He doesn't get angry. You'll not see me in your house anymore. He doesn't get angry and not relate with you anymore. If you greet me, don't bother to greet me. I will not answer. It's not like that because he forbears with other people, forgiving one another. You see, there are some people, as long as you don't offend them, everything is fine. And you can, you know, you can talk, you can relate, you can, you know, act with them. As soon as you offend them, Maybe you did it unintentionally. You didn't know. You forgot yourself and you offend them. It's trouble. The new man is not like that. And you are not like that. 
I said, you are not like that. You'll be pleasant in your life in Jesus' name. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. As Christ has forgiven me, so I will do. As Christ has forgiven me, I can't hear my people, as Christ has forgiven me, so I will forgive other people. And when I forgive, I forget. I can't hear you. When I forgive, I forget. <laughs> and then you will not see them the following day and say, you know, it's the grace of God that makes me to greet you today. Because what you did last week that I remember, you will not remember. I said you will not remember. You will forgive and forget in Jesus' name. Number two there, the peacefulness of a recreated man. The peacefulness of a recreated man. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and above all, put on charity. Wear it like you are wearing your clothes. Put on charity. Put it on like you are putting on your glasses there. Put it on. Because if you don't put it on, let's say you don't put on your glasses, you might not see well. If you don't put on charity, you will not see well. You will see things upside down. You will see things hazy. You will see things in a way that is not clear. Put on charity. Put on charity. And when you put on charity, the love of God, you will see as Christ would have seen. You will see as God would have seen. You'll put it on. I said you'll put it on. Before you go out in the morning, you put on your clothes. Before you go out in the morning, put on charity. I said, put on charity. And any, anybody that meets you, the first thing they will see is what you're putting on. Is the color of the clothing you're putting on. And so, if you put on charity, the person that meets you anywhere, anytime, it is that love, it is that charity, it is that compassion, it is that kindness that they will see. We will see it in your life. You will see it in our lives. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it tells us, and let the peace of God, your peaceable, your peaceable, there's no fighting, there's no uh, rancor, there's no disagreement, there is uh, no strife, and the peace of God ruling your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful, and be ye thankful. Somebody has done a slight thing for you, thank you brother. Somebody has done something you know, for you. Don't just take it and go your way. Thank you, sister. And thank people. Be ye thankful. And when you are praying, thank God to you. Thank God to you for what Christ, for what God has done for you. First Corinthians chapter 13. In First Corinthians chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, and don't put on charity, and become a sounding brass, and a tinkling cymbal, you see, I, I, I have a much knowledgeable I am, I can speak that language either supernaturally or by learning the language of any nation, the tongues of men, and even of angels, if I don't put on charity. You know, you might quote from Genesis Revelation, and you might be in that house fellowship, and then you go through everything and give the right answer, the correct answer to every question, and then you ask fellowship members who say, hey, our house fellowship leader knows the Bible, and our zona leader, our coordinator knows the Bible, our local pastor knows the Bible. But you know, if you have all that knowledge, and you don't have charity, it's nothing. I pray you will not be nothing. You will not be an entity. Look at verse 2. And do I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge? And do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity? I am nothing. 
You know, if you want to become somebody in the kingdom of God, charity is the key. Love is the key. Compassion is the key. Kindness is the key. Helping other people, that's the key. It's not the title. It's not the position. It's not the name of your church. It's not anything at all. And it's not your education. It's not your qualification. The key is charity. You'll put on charity. I, I see you there. You are thinking, oh, Lord, give me more charity. He'll give you more charity. He'll give you more love in Jesus' name. Look at verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I have, I give my body to be bought and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Verse 4. Charity suffered long and is kind. I am kind. I said, I am kind. Say that again, I am kind. <laughs> You'll be kind to little children. You'll be kind to those who are weak. You'll be kind to those who are falling. You'll be kind to those who are backsliding. You'll be kind to people who are having problems. And your kindness will bring them back in Jesus' name. Charity envies not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity is not puffed up. They will not read pride in your air, in your comportment. They will not read pride in your conduct, in your lifestyle. They will not read pride in the way you carry yourself. You'll bend down and bend low to lift up other people. It will happen to you. Does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked easily provoked angry 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 and is a kind of annoyed at every little thing it's not easily provoked thinkers no evil it's not thinking i'm going to punish that person i'm going to oppress that person i'm going to injure that person i'm going to do it in this way and that way he thinks no evil every evil is cleansed out of your heart in jesus name rejoices not in iniquity but rejoices in the truth verse 7 beareth all things Believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Verse 8, charity never faileth. Can you say that with me? Uh, you know, I have charity, but you know, he has uh, stepped on my toes for too long. My charity has now come to the final end. I don't have charity anymore. Charity never failed he pushed me to the wall i was loving him i had compassion i had mercy i had kindness but you know what can i do now he pushed me to the wall and i find i cannot love him again verse h charity never failed can you read that with me your charity will not fail your kindness will not end and your compassion will not cease in Jesus' name. Verse 13, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Then look at, uh, look at, number, look at James chapter 3. James chapter 3. We're reading from verse 17. James chapter 3 verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. I pray you'll be gentle. I said you'll be gentle. We'll see it on your face. It's a gentle brother. We'll see it in your, in your comportment. She's a gentle sister. You'll be gentle to everyone in Jesus' name. Easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. The fruit and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Number one, the pleasantness of a renewed man. 
Number two, the peaceableness of a recreated member. Number three, the preparedness of rewardable ministers. The preparedness of rewardable ministers. We're looking at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And then it says, and whatsoever ye do, whatever you do in the family circle, whatever you do in your community, Whatever you do with a friend, whatever you do with a neighbor, whatever you do to a fellow brother, whatever you do to a fellow sister, it says you are doing it as unto the Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Look at that verse 16 again. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. How? I said, how? Richly. It means you'll not say, I've got enough. Let it dwell in your heart richly, abundantly, overflowing. Have the word of God so that it is not just what you need of the word of God. What others need that through your life, it will flow to them. Through your life, it will spill over to them. That's why it says it will dwell in you richly and then you are able to teach others because you have what it takes. You have learned it for yourself. It's doing good in your life and it's going to good, do good in other people's lives. Give me a good amen. amen. Admonishing one another in Psalms. Do you know there are some religious people not born again? They learn the Psalms to destroy other people. Ah, uh, you have done that to me. I'm going to take Psalm, they mention that Psalm, and they want to read that Psalm seven times, 14 times, 27 times, 35 times, so that they can destroy that person. They think the Psalms were given to destroy their enemies. Look at, look at this one here. It says, teaching and admonishing one another, tell me, in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, Singing with grace in your heart. You will not sing with anger. You will not sing with bitterness. You will not sing with revenge. You will not sing with an intention of oppressing anybody. You are singing with grace in your heart. And you are doing it to the Lord. And the Lord will hear. And a miracle will come out of that singing in Jesus' name. And whatsoever ye do in word, in your conversation. Whatsoever ye do in word, in your communication. Whatsoever ye do in anything you are sharing with other people. Or indeed in action, in performance. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Second Timothy, chapter 2. There's the life of the minister. You have the word of Christ. It dwells in you richly, so you can teach and admonish other people. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It will happen. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Reading from verse 28. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. You are teaching others. You are admonishing others. It says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, 
That's why the word of God is dwelling in you richly in all wisdom. You're teaching others. You're counseling others. You're helping others. You're enlightening others, teaching them in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The Lord will perfect other people's lives and other people's families through your teaching and preaching in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 10. In First Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, whatsoever ye do, in the church, in the assembly, in the fellowship, in the house fellowship, in your place of work, anywhere, everywhere, in the morning, afternoon, or in the night, to the person intimate and closest to you, or to the person you are meeting for the first time far away, it says, whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. Can you beat another person, fight to the glory of God? Can you oppress somebody to the glory of God? I can't hear you. Can you cheat somebody to the glory of God? Uh, can you steal something from him to the glory of God? Can you mess up his life to the glory of God? No, it says, whatsoever you do, there should be good things that we do, wonderful things that we do. And we're prepared for the coming of the Lord, and we're prepared as ministers. The pleasantness of renewed man, the peaceableness of the recreated member, the preparedness of rewardable ministers. We're coming back to Colossians chapter 3. Point number three now, the picture and the pattern for reproductive mastery. The picture and the pattern for reproductive mastery. When we talk of mastery, it means that we master self. We bring self under control. You know, if you are angry at anything, anybody, anytime, it's because self, you are not in control of yourself. You have not mastered self. And you know, if covetousness takes the better part of you, and you forget that you're a Christian, you forget that you're a new creature, and you're running after that thing, you've not taken the mastery over yourself. If there is any drive in the negative direction, and then you're driving yourself to reach after that thing, and you know all the while this is wrong, you're not a master of yourself. But when you master yourself, when you are in mastery, it means then that by the grace of God, your life will be reproductive. I said your life will be reproductive. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading here from verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for, tell me, mastery. Striveth for the mastery. A person that wants to be a master over self, over his soul, over his circumstances. And he says, I'm going for mastery. Every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, an incorruptible, I therefore so on. Not as uncertainly, so fight I, fighting self, fighting sin, fighting falsehood. Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body. Does somebody have a mastery? And bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, 
I myself should be a castaway. You will not be a castaway. I said you will not be a castaway. Master self. Master yourself. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And here we're reading from verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangles himself for the affairs of this life, that she may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Look at verse 5. And if he must also strive for masteries, plural, in every area of your life, sin will not master you. Temptation will not master you. Satan will not master you. Society will not master you. Let me hear a good amen. amen. You know, somebody said, I lost control. You know why? This society is so bad. You know, normally I'm gentle. Normally I'm nice. Normally I'm kind. But you know, they push me and push me and push me until I lost control. Society will not master you. All the provocations around you will not master you in Jesus' name. You'll be a champion. You'll be a victor. You'll be a master in Jesus' name. In every area of your life. Plural masteries. Look at verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet you see not crowd, except a strive lovefully. Let's come back to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 25. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to verse 25. This section will divide to three parts. Number one, relationship of respect in the family relationship of respect in the family the husband respects the wife the wife respects the husband the father honors and respects in a way the children the children honor and respect the parents mutual respect for each other relationship of respect in the family second reform and responsibility on the field we go to a place of work we go to the marketplace and we go there with the mind of reform that is if they're doing anything wrong there we're going to reform that place you'll be a reformer i said you'll be a reformer you will not join them to do evil but your presence there your walking there will make them come as people of reform and responsibility. Reform and responsibility on the field. Number three, reward or recompense in the future. Reward or recompense in the future. We're looking at number one, relationship of respect in the family. Colossians chapter three, I'm reading from verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. It's not because the husband is stronger physically. It's not because the husband is richer financially. It's not because the husband is more educated just because he's husband. Here is the word of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Look at verse 19 now. Husbands, so that the whole responsibility of respect is not one-sided. It's on both sides. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Don't act in bitterness. 
don't relate in bitterness and don't decide anything in bitterness then in verse 20 children obey your parents in a few things tell me out aloud you know my parents are not as educated as i am and so what they are saying they don't understand i am more educated i'm more qualified to take a decision for my life because you see these parents are parents of the old school old thought old lifestyle don't talk like that that's no respect for your parents it says children educated children it says children growing children children born again children children those who know the lord obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the lord look at the other side now verse 21 fathers provoke not your children to anger understand the level of understanding understand the level of development understand the needs they have and don't say i'm father i'm mother what i say is final i'm not going to consider anything no reasoning no opinion no pleading no tears nothing will change this is it final i am father don't be authoritarian and don't be tyrant it says fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged you will not discourage your children i can't hear the amen, amen. ephesians chapter 5 for start to one ephesians chapter 5 for start to one for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they twain how many of them i said how many of them they two husband and wife male and female one husband one wife one man one woman give me a good amen and they two shall be one flesh verse 33 nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife love his wife so love his wife make it superlative make it higher make it greater make it thoughtful make it well planned make it overflowing so love his wife as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband amen ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 children Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. In any century, this is right. In any dispensation, this is right. In any community, this is right. In any family, this is right. In every church, this is right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother which is the false commandment with promise god will prolong your life as you respect your parents that it may be well with thee and thou mayest that thou mayest live long on the earth you will live long on the earth and ye fathers provoke not your children to rust, but bring them up bring them up don't throw them down bring them up don't stamp them down bring them up don't bury them in the mud bring them up not just beating them up every time bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the lord the lord will make our families better in jesus name we're looking at number two reform and responsibility on the field reform and responsibility on the field that means in our places of work in the marketplace on the field where we serve reform and responsibility colossians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 22 servants servants civil servants servants home servants servants apprentices 
servants those who are trainees who are learning from somewhere you're learning somewhere servants junior workers under a director servants obey you know many things tell me if you mean to do it tell me now obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of mind, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Do it with all your heart. Enjoy your work. Appreciate your service. And say, were it not for this work, I'll be idle. Were it not for this opportunity, I will be a kind of, I'll be roaming about. And I have this chance to work here in this office. I have this chance to work here in this market. Do it with excitement and with joy. And do it with enthusiasm. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Reading from verse 5, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, and with fear and trembling, in singleness of mind, of heart, as unto Christ, as unto Christ. How would you work in your place of work if your master, if your boss, if your director were Christ himself? You're teaching in school. How would you teach if your principal were Christ himself? You're a civil servant and you are under this leader, under that boss. How would you work if Christ were your boss right there? Look at these servants. Be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling in singleness of mind, of heart, as unto Christ. You'll do that in Jesus' name. Not with high service, as men please us, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not unto men. First Timothy chapter 6. In First Timothy chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 6, we're reading from verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke, that's under the rule, count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them. Ah, my, my boss is born again. And so my boss should understand it should not be demanding I'm competent. It should not be demanding that I'm committed. It should not be demanding I do everything on time. That I meet up with deadlines. After all, is he not born again? Look at verse 2. And they that are believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather... Do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. Titus chapter 2 verse 9. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well. Tell me, in all things, I've done my best. If that does not please him, he's too demanding. He's a perfectionist. He wants everything done, everything total, everything complete to the dot of an eye, to the cross of a T. He wants perfection. That's all I can do. If it's not satisfactory to him, let him terminate my appointment and look for another work. Don't say that again. The Lord will give you grace. I said the Lord will give you grace. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things. Not answering again. Not purloining. Not roaming about. 
for showing of good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Colossians now, the end of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 24. Colossians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 24. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 24, this is reward in the future. Reward in the future. You will not labor in vain. The Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3, verse 24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. You receive a reward. What are you? You'll be rewarded in Jesus' name. Your work in the kingdom will be rewarded. Your ministry in the church will be rewarded. And your labor of service in your place of work will be rewarded in Jesus' name. But look at verse 25. But there will be no but in your life. There will be no blemish in your life. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. There is no respect of persons. No respect of persons. You will be rewarded in Jesus' name. We're looking at Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give, how many people? Every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Are they there? Blessed are they that do his commandments. Are they here in the house tonight? I pray you'll do the commandments of the Lord. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gate into the city. You'll get to the heavenly city. But without her dogs and sorcerers and all mongers and murderers and idolaters and also ever lovers and makers a lie no lie in your life no deception in your life no weariness in your life in jesus name first corinthians chapter 15 First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, you will not labor in vain. I said you will not labor in vain. From this day, from this earth, the Lord will reward the labor of your hand. And when we cross over to the great beyond, reward, crowns, stars in your crown, waiting for you in Jesus' name. If you be risen with Christ, see those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand side of God. Seek those things that are above. Set your affections on things above and not on things on earth. For ye are dead, and your life is seed with Christ in God, and Christ is coming. I said our Christ is coming, and when Christ shall appear, we also shall see him and be with him. For we shall see his glory, you'll be with him in glory. Why don't you rise up and pray and say, Lord, grant me grace, grant me grace, grant me grace, so that I will do as you have instructed today. I will obey your commandments. I'll obey your words. I'm buried with Christ. I'm dead with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ crucified and buried and also i'm risen up with christ risen up with christ you tell the lord that you'll set your heart you'll set your mind on things in heaven and not on things on earth and the glory of the lord will be upon your life be faithful be faithful the lord will reward you reward you here on earth and reward you in the great beyond